a colourful brain map, a bioreactor, technology to open arteries, and clothes made from bacteria grown in green tea are some of the research that Imperial scientists are involved in, currently on display at the Science Museum. At the Who Am I exhibit at the Science Museum, I spoke to Professor Colin Caro about his work with stents. The very common disease is of arteries is atherosclerosis, which causes heart attack and stroke and, and other problems. It, the disease blocks the arteries and stents are used. Stents are, I'll show in a moment, perforated metal tubes which are put into arteries to open them when they're blocked and, and keep them open. Putting it inside an artery actually straightens the tube. Uh, the flow likes to swirl and mix in arteries, very important for the, the living of the arteries. And we have recognized that and developed a three-dimensional stent, which is this one here. Um, that causes the flow to swirl and mix as it does normally. And, and prevents the development of disease. Well, it's very exciting to be at the Science Museum. One's exhibit is seen by youngsters and not so young people, uh, encouraging people to go into science. The Brainbow Mouse is also on display at the Who Am I exhibit. I spoke to Dr. Simon Schultz to find out more. So the Brainbow Mouse was actually quite a revolutionary advance in neuroscience. First developed at Harvard University, it makes the circuitry or the wiring diagram of the brain fluorescent and thus visible under a microscope. With the Brainbow Mouse, you now have visible brain circuitry. But to understand the brain, we need not just to see the circuitry, but to see it function. So what we're trying to do at Imperial is to develop techniques to look at the activity in the, of the nervous system in the Brainbow Mouse so that we can relate activity or function to structure. So the Science Museum has got an exhibit on the Brainbow Mouse which contains some images provided uh, by the original developers of the Brainbow Mouse uh, showing um, basically sort of pictures of, sort of exquisite detail of the circuitry of the brain from this mouse. In addition, you can see a mouse and the brain and a mouse brain um, that were used in our research which we've donated to the Science Museum. Also on display in the antenna wing is a mini bioreactor. I spoke to Boyan Tamburic to find out more. Well, what we have inside the reactor is the unicellular green alga, Chlamydomonas reinharti, uh, which is basically splitting water into hydrogen. And the idea is to produce hydrogen, which we believe is the sustainable fuel of the future, directly from sunlight and water. And it's a two-stage process. In the first part of the process, the algae splits water into oxygen molecules, protons and electrons. And it, then it also has an enzyme, a natural catalyst, which recombines those protons and electrons to produce hydrogen. Well, at the moment, we're working at the one liter laboratory scale. Uh, the aim of the project is to scale up first to 10 liters and then onwards. And there are two ways of using it. We can look at some kind of distributed generation where the reactor is sitting on somebody's roof they produce it, the algae are producing hydrogen, which can then be used for heating, transport and electricity so to provide all the domestic needs of the home. Or we can think of large ponds somewhere perhaps in the desert where we'll be producing massive amounts of hydrogen which are then distributed around the world. A coat made from sugary biofilm is also on display at the Trash Fashion Exhibit. Dr Alexander Bismarck told me more. The material of the clothes behind me is made out of bacterial cellulose which is being produced in an aesthetic culture fermenting bacteria in a green tea medium which is called kombucha medium. I produce bacterial cellulose and a, well it, it's a swollen layer of bacterial cellulose, bacteria and sugars which can be processed into a thin film um, and easily processed be into clothing. The novel application of it is Bacterial cellulose is around since forever, mainly as a food product, but the novel application is turning it into clothes for high-end fashion applications. The problem with this clothing behind me is basically the fact that um, it's still bacterial cellulose and still contains sugars and bacteria, which makes it extremely hydrophilic. So if you want to wear it, you start sweating, it swells and turns into a goo-like material again. The aim really is to produce a material, bacterial cellulose material, that's hydrophobic enough to not swell um, unrestricted into goo but remain leather-like. But what did visitors to the exhibition think? 
I think things in fashion like this is a good idea because it's better for the environment, but I think if it was cheaper, then it would be a good idea, but if it's too expensive, then it's not. I, I would wear fashion like this as long as it didn't cost too much. The Who Am I exhibit's really nice and it's really interactive, so it makes it really fun. The Who Am I exhibit's very interesting as you can learn about things like genetics and DNA.